Hi, it's John. This lesson is about voicings of chords and having options when you're playing rhythm guitar. It could be neo soul, it could be jazz, blues, rock, country, metal, anything. Any genre has rhythm guitar involved. So what we're going to do is look at a simple chord sequence. I'm just going to be playing G to A minor, then G to D minor. Really simple and really common chord sequence. But what I'm going to do is show you some simple options with voicings. So playing the same chords in different places on your guitar. And what it does is it gives you different kind of sounds or different voicings as we call it in music. So it enables you to layer things if you're recording or play with another musician. If a piano player is playing high or something, you could play a low voicing, things like that. It makes it a much more sort of usable thing for you to be playing rhythm in a band or something. It sounds better. So what I'm going to do is start by playing low, then middle, and then high, and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing. So first of all, it's probably the most simple voicing that most of you will have seen before. It's just a bar chord of a G. So what we're going to do is bar all the strings on the third fret and then form this E chord with our second finger on the fourth fret of the G string and our third and fourth fingers on the fifth fret of the A and D respectively. Really simple. And then up to our A minor chord, which is at the fifth fret, is exactly the same shape, but we're taking this third, uh, second finger, excuse me, off, and we're making a minor chord. So we're going back to the G chord, and then up to D minor at the fifth fret. So you're barring everything up to the A string on the fifth fret, then you're putting your second finger on the B string, sixth fret and your little finger on the 7th fret and your 3rd finger on the 7th fret of the G and D. Really simple. So for the middle voice in what I'm doing, I'm employing techniques from the caged system. So what I was doing was playing a G chord in the shape of a D. So what I was doing is moving this D chord if I move it up a tone So played at the 7th fret becomes a G chord. And then to get an A minor, using this triad of A minor here. So our second finger is on the D string 10th fret. Our first finger is on the 9th fret, sorry, of the G string. And our third finger is on the B string on the 10th fret. So this little triangle. So those two shapes. simple D minor triad is the 10th fret on the first three strings. Cool. The next one, again, is a quite simple voicing and common, so lots of you might have seen this one before. This is a G chord, but I'm playing just three strings at the 12th fret, so I'm playing the B, the G, and the D. And that comes from this G chord. So I'm playing that there, and then an A minor bar chord. So this is exactly the same. It's our low open A minor, but our first finger is acting as this nut of the guitar, or a capo, all the way up on the 12th fret, barring up to the A string. And then our second finger is on the B string, on the 13th fret, and then third and fourth fingers are on the G and the D on the 14th fret. So we have this little simple voice in. Then a D minor, we're just playing the D minor triad, exactly the same as you know it down here on your first set of frets. Really easy, so you've got your first finger on the 13th fret of the E string, your third finger is on the 15th fret of the B, and your second finger is on the 14th fret of the G. The point of this video is to give a brief introduction on voicings and how we can use them in chords and sequences and all this kind of stuff. It's really, really interesting and it's a really good practice to get into if you want to sound good consistently as a musician. 
If anyone wants any other sort of topics or lessons or anything in any genre at all, just let me know.